All right, welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast, Week 15 Fantasy Football Semi-Final Edition, dude. Uh, my name's Joe Bond, co-host Dave Eddy. Uh, how, uh, how's your semi-final matchups going, man? If you got any. Um, I, I don't even have a rest of the uh, season league or anything, so um, I, oh. I I didn't lose anything, man. Oh, all right. You just you just in the DFS thing. I thought at least you had like a dynasty I, uh, league somewhere. No, it, over over the the last few years, I've just slowly been dwindling my leagues down after I got into like just an asinine amount of them. So yeah, it's, it's weird. It's weird, but I mean, I miss it sometimes, but it's also kind of nice sometimes. Yeah, I had it down to like four at one point, and it's now back up to nine. Yep, see, some of the, exactly. Some, some of them are best ball league, so you do nothing. Um, yeah. So, and I like drafting, so <laughs> whatever. I just have fun doing the drafts, and so best ball kind of fits fits right up there with me. Um, anyway, man, we're watching Bills and Steelers right now. Uh, Steelers just scored a touchdown. I'm in the. Uh, Fight of my life here in a semifinal matchup that I just explained to you. I've got the Bills defense. I'm losing by point three, and the guy I'm playing has Cole Beasley and Boswell. So I'm hoping for like no field goals, nothing for Beasley, and lots of sacks and turnovers. It's not happening so far. So all right, <laughs> although his guys aren't really doing much either, but it's he's got the upper hand. He uh, he had McCaffrey and Drake against me, so it was a pretty brutal day for me. <laughs> Um, anyway, man, let's get, let's get rock and roll in here. Uh, start here. I think my ESPN defaults to the Redskins games. I realized because that's like my, my, I'm doing air quotes, favorite team. Uh, and so it puts them first. So yeah, we're going to start with the Eagles and Redskins Eagles 37 Redskins 21. Uh, Miles Sanders balled out in this game, man. 122 yards rushing and a touchdown. Uh, caught another 50 yards and a touchdown. It was all him, man. Um, you know, Wentz had a good day overall passing to a bunch of nobodies really, but I guess against the Redskins, a bunch of nobodies will work. Um, you know, Haskins wasn't too shabby himself though. Honestly, uh, 261 and two touchdowns. One was a 75 yarder to Terry F1 McLaurin. Uh, he, overall his stat line was hundred five receptions, 130 and a touch Peterson, you know, wasn't great, but you know, got the job done 16 for 66 and a touch. You, you know, he had a couple Good cutback plays. But, yeah, Redskins fall. Uh, Eagles still in the hunt to win the NFC East. Next week's game against the Cowboys is going to be pretty, pretty important. Uh, but, yeah, speaking of Wentz, I mean, overall, though, he, he got it done. I mean, he came through in a spot he should have come through with not a lot around him. You know, Ertz and Sanders is really what it was. How much are we trusting him next week against Dallas with this same cast uh, of uh, characters around him? I mean, I I hate to give like the generic answer of, um, you know, if you owned Wentz or a lot of people that we're going to talk about, it kind of is going to depend on who else you own. Well, right. Um, but I, I mean, if you if you have Wentz and you know you you have to play him, um, your level of Trust going forward, I guess, as long as, you know, Ertz and Goddard are healthy and, you know, Sanders uh, can play like he did today. I mean, I guess it, it's not the end of the world, but you're certainly not, you know, excited about it. You'd rather have, you know, Jeffrey and Alshon out there and um, That's know, Jackson guy. and whatnot. But, <laughs> I mean, you, you're going to do what you got to do, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he'll probably be ranked around that, you know, 15, 16 range, I'm assuming, kind of like he was this week. I think I had him at like 13. Um, it, it He's going to be that like that middle tier of like streamable quarterbacks that you're kind of going, I don't really love it. But yeah, again, you didn't expect to be in this situation with the Eagles. But if you have him, like I do in one league, um, you're probably gonna have to throw him out there unless you were lucky enough to pick like a pick up like a Tannehill or somebody like that. But those guys were, you know, pretty much long gone at this point. Yeah, and if you had Tannehill, you're not thinking about starting once anyway, so it wouldn't really no, matter. No, 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 definitely not. Uh all right, Pats and Bengals. Let's get this one here. Pats looking shaky at first, but finally stepped up and took this one thirty eight to thirteen. 
Um, Tom Brady, super pedestrian, man. Like, I, I don't know what to think here with him anymore. I, I, it's hard to know if it's just like him falling off or if it's the cast around him just not being there. Um, but 128, he did throw two touchdowns at least, I guess. But ugh, it wasn't, this wasn't a pretty game, man. Like, um, I mean, Edelman was basically shut out two for nine. I mean, he was ranked really high in you know, everybody's rankings for good reason. It's the freaking Bengals, right? Um, you know, Michelle, 89 yards rushing. I guess that's cool. Um, Bengals side, we got Dalton with 151 in the touch, four interceptions. I mean, that is why the Patriots won this game. You know, the Bengals just turned the ball over a ton. Um, not much on the receiving end for the Bengals, obviously. Although Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon did his thing again. He looked really, really good against this stout New England defense, 136 yards rushing in total. Um, he was making plays all over the place, and you know, it was it was looking good. But, I mean, at this point with how Brady has been kind of meh, and, you know, this was a really soft matchup against the Bengals, you know, next week they get the Bills which we know is not a soft matchup are obviously you're not starting Brady, but Edelman is a guy that's like plug and play at this point, in my opinion. But are we worried at all with Edelman next week in your finals against the bills? I mean, I don't think you can allow yourself to be Could, could you imagine if, I mean, I don't even know who you would have that you could consider, you know, starting over him, but could you just imagine not starting Edelman, and I don't know, putting Darius Slayton in, in his place, let's say, and you lose and, you know, Edelman has his normal, you know, 15, 20 point game and Slayton puts up eight. I mean, I, I don't yeah. see any possible way that you can ride him this long and then all of a sudden be like, ah, I think I'm going to just sit him in the most important matchup of the year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've got a league where I've got Edelman, Sutton, Terry McLaurin, Christian Kirk. Um. Tyler Boyd, Zach Pascal. I mean, I'm probably throwing throwing him out there if I can survive the semifinal matchup. It's another one where I'm kind of nail biting. Uh, uh, it's it's close. It's it's not it's not over, but it's not looking super fantastic for me. But if I can get through, then yeah, Edelman's probably going back in there, no questions asked. But it's you don't feel good about it, man. This this offense is kind of going in the wrong direction. But uh next matchup here we got. Bucks and the Lions. Um, Bucks take this one, thirty-eight to seventeen. It it was a one possession game at one point. A, a last second, you know, pick six kind of made the score what it is. But uh, this was really kind of in control by the Bucks most of the most of the way. Jameis Winston started off shaky, throwing a pick on his. I think it was like the second pass, and then turned around and threw for four hundred fifty-eight yards and four touchdowns. So. Um, looking real good there. Uh, Ronald Jones, a running game, just just nothing. There's nothing there. Um, the receiving game, uh, the big, big news is Chris Godwin. Uh, came up lame, hamstring injury, got ruled out pretty quickly. So really bad news there. Uh, secondary big news is that Brashard Perryman, 113 yards, five catches, and three touchdowns. So, yeah, big, big game from him. Uh, and next week, the Bucks, I believe, get the Texans. So it's not as easy of a matchup as the Lions. But, I mean, the Texans' defense isn't, isn't fantastic. But Watson or Winston's going to have to do this without Godwin, most likely, and without Evans. So Perryman, Howard, um, you know, Justin Watson, those guys, they're all going to have to step up. And in place of two of the best receivers in the game. So that's going to be interesting. Um, Detroit side, David Blau, nothing, dude. Just bad. Um, you know, they moved the ball and kind of handed it to this guy, Wes Hillis, because, uh, surprise, Bo Scarborough was out. Um, Wes Hillis, 21 yards, two touchdowns. He just kind of barreled in from the one or two yard line twice. Uh, Galladay was kind of shut down, three for 44. Amendola was the guy, eight for 102. So, you know, PPR leagues, you know, just yardage wise, you know, you're happy there. You would have liked him to get in the end zone, but it just didn't happen. Um, the takeaway here, you know, the question is just, I mean, 
I mentioned how Winston's going to have to get this done next week. I mean, despite those two being out, I mean, is he like a top? He's got to be in like top 10 quarterback range, right? I mean, he just does this with it doesn't matter because it's just how he's playing, right? I mean, you just got to plug him in there if you've got him, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say he's definitely <clears throat> top 10 for sure. He, he's still facing a, a pretty weak pass defense there with the Texans. Um, I mean, don't, don't forget Perriman, if I'm not mistaken, was a first-round pick. Um, just, you know, didn't really get the opportunity so much um, in Baltimore. And now he's on that's a right. team that just Desperately throws the ball help. like a mother, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, that's- so, I mean, uh, yes, if you have Jameis, um, you know, especially since he's facing the Texans, he's a no doubt must start no matter if you've got Edwins or Godwin um, on the field. Yeah, hopefully Godwin, we get some good news from him, but I'm not banking on it, unfortunately. So uh, I think I got enough to to beat out Edelman and his two for nine in the in the fantasy football pie bet with with Godwin, but uh, kind of lucked out there. Uh, next game here, we got Bears and Packers. Bears lose thirteen to twenty one. Um, you know, Chicago Trubisky threw three hundred thirty four yards, just trying to play catch up. Two picks, one one touchdown. Then went to Anthony Miller, who had a good game, nine for one hundred eighteen and a touchdown. So, I mean, Anthony Miller, man, he's he's looking really, really, really good here. The last few games, yeah. I, I, I'm liking him. Yeah. Allen Robinson did good things. The running game, not a whole lot there on the Chicago side. Green Bay side of things here. We got Rodgers with two or three and a touchdown. Kind of normal for him, right? Just 200 yards and a touch. That's kind of what we're getting lately. Uh, Aaron Jones, yeah, he he scored twice, 51 yards though. Uh, Devontae Adams was the the big winner here for for Green Bay. You know, seven one hundred three and a touchdown. Um, you know. I, I talked about Anthony Miller here. I mean, he's a real deal here now, right? I mean, they're playing the Chiefs. I know it's a, a fairly good secondary with the Chiefs, but, I mean, you've, you've got to just trust Anthony Miller at this point, right? I mean, he's, he feels like a like a league winner at this point. You know, almost next to nothing, just plug him in as like a wide receiver three, probably, or even a flex. You're getting like 20 points from this guy every week. Yeah, I think it, it definitely is another – Another situation where it really does depend on your other options. I mean, he doesn't have the greatest matchup against the Chiefs. Um, I mean, I don't trust Trubisky one single bit. So I really think that, you know, you probably, well, you certainly didn't draft Anthony Miller expecting to be relying on him, you know, to win a championship. So odds are you've got at least one, if not two other guys that, that you could argue playing over him. So, I think it's really just kind of league dependent. It might even be matchup dependent. I mean, I think that next week, if I had to choose between Miller or Perriman, if I had to pick right this second, I would I would play Perriman over Miller personally. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I would agree with that too, especially if Godwin's out. You know, I'm thinking Miller's going to creep into that like top 30 wide receiver range though, where it's going to be real hard to sit him in a lot of leagues, I, I bet. Um, so that that's where I'm saying like he, he definitely – high on him as you are. Dude, I don't know about I don't know about top thirty. That's that might be pushing it a little bit. I mean, that he doesn't have a great matchup. I I, I hear you. I just I know things get crazy here at the end, man. And like you, you sometimes you just gotta ride that hot hand. I, I've done it in the past couple of years, and you know <laughs> I, I'm I'm not one to just say you know start your studs and just and just ride it out. You know I I think. I think it's I think it's you know just rather I mean he was number thirty eight this week for me so like he had another good week I, I think he could easily creep into that 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 top uh, that top thirty range I mean eleven fourteen twenty three thirteen and this week uh, I don't know what the total was it was high <laughs> so uh, anyway moving on here we've got Texas and Titans. Texans win 24-21. Close game all around. Kind of sloppy game around. And a lot a lot of turnovers in this one. Watson threw two picks with 243 and two touchdowns. Both both went to stills, unfortunately, for Hopkins owners and Fuller owners. Um, Hyde had a good game, 104 and a touch. Uh, Watson added 32 yards on the ground, too. So, so pretty good overall day for, for Watson as far as fantasy-wise goes. You're not totally complaining. 
Uh, Tannehill, 279 and two touchdowns, also added 10 yards on the ground. Derrick Henry, you know, 86 yards, no touchdowns for like the first time, it feels like in a while. A.J. Brown, keeping it rolling, dude. I uh, had him in like my top 15 this week, and he delivered eight for 114 in the touchdown. So big, big things there for him. Um, and I mean, that, that's exactly where I want to go. I mean, the last three weeks for AJ Brown have just been off the charts. Good dude. He's, he's really come to life. And, um, you know, I, I called, I called Anthony Miller, a league winner. I think AJ Brown, if you were able to snatch him off the waiver wire, I think this guy is going to be the league winner, like waiver wire pickup of, you know, like this late season waiver wire pickup that happened. Um, obviously plug and play, right? I mean, they're, they're, uh, they get, they get the saints though. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll backtrack a little bit. Uh, I forgot my notes. <laughs> he probably going to be shadowed by Lattimore. I mean, yeah, the way, the I, way I he's, perf- so. the, the way um, he's performing though, like you just got to go after him. Right. I mean, you gotta, oh, you man. gotta just keep him out there. I think, yeah, I think in, in A.J. Brown's case, probably so. Um, again, it, when you start to get to these, you know, not top-tier guys, it, it really can depend on, you know, who you have else to choose from. I'd probably, I would play Miller over A.J. Brown, um, if only because of the Lattimore matchup. Interesting. Um, and I can see that being a low-scoring game. Uh, I, I mean, I... I just I could see that being a low-scoring game. So I was super high on Brown this week. I, I'm not going to be so high on him next week, but I don't think that starting him is is a mistake at all. Yeah, I'm. I don't remember which league I've got him in, but I have him in one. And if I make it, if I make it through, I will. I will most likely be plugging him in. He's just been a catalyst. To, you know, it's just been a huge boost to the team here. Broncos Chiefs next game. Broncos three Chiefs twenty three. Um, big snow game, and I mean, Broncos was lost in this game, man. Drew Locke looked awful. Lindsey couldn't get it going. Freeman couldn't get it going. Sutton had like one good drive, and you know, squeaked out four for seventy nine total because of that one drive. Um, this was Pat Mahomes three forty and two touchdowns, looking good again. Uh, the running game was too split up to matter. Kelsey eleven for one forty two. Tyreek Hill five for sixty seven and two touchdowns. I mean, this was this was just Pat Mahomes just picking apart the Denver defense and the and the Broncos with Drew Locke looking lost. Um, I mean, not that I was like starting Locke, but at least you know he was keeping Sutton relevant and and even Lindsey relevant, right? But I mean, this was an awful performance by Drew Locke. I mean, was this just? Was this the snow, or was this now? You know, this is his third game, and teams have tape on him. You know, what's the blame here? I mean, I, I'm like surprisingly worried about Sutton and Lindsay next week in leagues that I own him, own them. Well, let me uh, give you a spoiler then, because the Broncos are facing the Lions next week. Oh, um, never mind. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So never mind. <laughs> um, one thing that I will say is, and I get a lot of shit from Pat about this on. Uh, the Sunday School uh, DFS podcast, but I, I mean, I've been riding Lindsey ever since he, you know, basically officially got anointed that you know starting running back, and he hasn't done much of anything since since that point. Yeah, and unless he gets in the end zone, it's not a whole lot. Oh man! And so next week is not going to actually be it. You would think that that'd be a time where I would play him, but I'm gonna. I don't think I'm going to. I have to see what other matchups are out there, but. Uh, I think that Drew Locke and Sutton are going to be just gold mines next week, uh, especially DFS wise for Locke. I imagine he's going to be, I mean, his prices are going to get bumped up, but I think that it'll still be very reasonable and he's going to do a lot better next week. That, that Chiefs defense specifically, well, I mean, in the secondary because of the running defense is terrible, but right. all in all, that, that defense is much better than the people give them credit for. You just think of that team as, you know, a high powered offense and, you know, trying to outscore people and, and whatnot. And they're a lot better defensively than you think they are. No, no. I mean, I said that they had a good secondary. Um, they really do. They got, um, uh, honey badger and, oh man, I'm totally blanking on a bunch of their secondary players, but they, I mean, yeah, they, Breland. yeah, brilliant. I think they've one of the fuller brothers. Um, I forget, 
um, anyway, yeah, it, it's a it's a solid secondary. It really is. Anyway, moving on here, uh, Dolphins, Giants, uh, <laughs> Eli, man, making it making it work, dude. Uh, Thirty six to twenty, two eighty six, two hundred uh, two touchdowns. Did throw three picks, but hey, you know they won the game and handily. Um, Saquon Barkley. Finally, man, finally, Saquon Barkley, 112 yards rushing, two touchdowns, got one, uh, got one snaked from him, um, so that sucked, I owned Barkley in one league and needed it pretty badly, not not working in my favor, uh, Sterling Shepard was the uh, yardage uh, reception leader here, nine for 111, uh, Tate got a kind of a fluky, weird touchdown, kind of bounced off a couple guys. He caught it, and then nobody else was behind him, so he just took off. Slayton found the end zone, but only caught two passes. Only got targeted three times, too, so that was kind of weird after like just blowing up last week against the Eagles. Um, Fitzpatrick looked good, too, though, 279 and two touchdowns. Um, Devontae Parker did play. So did Albert Wilson. So that was that was huge for Fitzpatrick because I was worried about him this week without you know his guys you know relied on Isaiah Ford and Alan Hearns and guys like that. Um, uh, but Parker two four for seventy two and two touchdowns on the running game. Uh, Patrick Laird twelve for forty six and nothing. I mean Miles Gaskin nine for forty three. Just uh, you're not you don't love the running game. That's not what you're here for. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, you know, Barkley finally goes over for a hundred as the two touchdowns. You know, I know nobody was ever sitting Barkley, right? But I mean, God, you you didn't love what you were getting from Barkley. It's kind of like Kamara, right? Um, but I mean, this at least has like give you that warm fuzzy feeling going into next week, right? They do get the Redskins, so like you've got to think like, okay, maybe maybe Barkley is healthy and like he's just gonna beast out again for me next week, right? Yeah, I think that the um, Kamara uh, comparisons is pretty good because I, I do feel like they've been kind of similar players. Uh, and obviously he gets a great matchup against the Dolphins if, if he didn't have a good game. And he didn't have to go for, you know, 100 plus and two touches. But, you know, he did have to look good. And if he didn't, then, yeah, you'd be concerned. But I don't know how you don't play him against the Redskins. But having, you know, this matchup under his belt, yeah, you feel a heck of a lot better. Uh, you know, rolling with him next week against the Redskins. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, <clears throat> next game here, Seattle 30, Carolina Panthers 24. This was a much, much closer game than I think anybody thought it was going to be. Um, Seattle here, Russell Wilson, 286 and two touchdowns, just Mr. Efficient. Chris Carson balled out, 133 and two touchdowns. Lockett finally returned, man. Eight for one twenty and a touch. DJ DK Metcalf caught a touchdown, but only two passes as well. On the Carolina side, you know, Kyle Allen just man, <laughs> right after they decided to be like, Yeah, you know, we're gonna we're gonna let Cam go basically in the offseason, Cam was like, Oh what? Oh, you mean there's no more pressure on me? Oh, I can suck again. <laughs> like what? Um Two seventy seven a touch and three interceptions. I mean, he's literally the reason they lost this game. Um McCaffrey just God dual McCaffrey things, right? You know, eighty seven yards on the ground, two touchdowns, eighty eight yards in in the air, and eight receptions. Uh DJ Moore, eight for one thirteen, so he had a good game as well. Um it just I'll go, I'll go back to, to Tyler Lockett. I mean, there was, there was, you know, a lot of concern about Tyler Lockett and how he really hasn't done much the last like eight weeks, except for like one massive game. And I think it was against Tampa Bay. I'm trying to pull up his game log right now. And just that he really just didn't do anything. I mean, he's been, yeah, there we go. Uh, since the end of October, beginning of November, he's had a four for 26, a two for 38, a three for zero. Oh, these are targets, actually. So three for 26, one for 38, zeros, four for 43. And then today he goes out and catches eight for 120. I mean, are we back to trusting Tyler Lockett again? Uh, next week they get the the Cardinals. So it's a, it's a fairly good matchup, right? I mean, it should be, should be easy for him to get open again. I mean, are we just... We're just ready to plug him right back out there. I mean, I, I guarantee there were concerns over him this week, and people did not use him. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, this isn't an easy matchup this week against Carolina. They're they're pretty decent against the pass. Uh, I mean, especially for how bad they are against the run. But yeah, I mean, Lockett has has really been hit or miss, like you said. I mean, you know, he had it's been a while since he's had a good game, and the last two good games he had came against Tampa and Atlanta, who are both notoriously bad this year against the pass. And yeah. then up next is the Cardinals. I I guess now that, you know, they got Gordon in the mix and, and they got Metcalf there, I guess it's not a guarantee that Patrick Peterson will, will shadow Lockett. I imagine he will. But to be completely fair, um, I mean, Patrick Peterson really hasn't been that great since he's been back. Yeah. I, I, I definitely thought that when he came back, he would, I mean, he wasn't going to drastically change that defense, but I thought that he would be an improvement and they're still getting thrown on like crazy. And, and he is too. So I think that, you know, if you do have Lockett, you, you're definitely going to play him for sure against the Cardinals. Uh, you're not going to fully trust him, but I, I don't think you can sit him down. Yeah. It's a very plus matchup for him. So I, I do much. like him. I do like him next week. Oh, pick for the bills. Run it back, baby. Sorry. This is my, this is my big play. This is my big play. Get past the lineman. Ah, damn. Sorry. All right. Uh, Little, little reaction. So close. Dude, I know. I'm so close. Short. I would have like that. Would have like sealed it. <laughs> I'm like on pins and needles here. That's gonna give me a four point lead here going into the, this like last quarter of play. So this is gonna be huge as long as Beasley doesn't do anything. Yeah, they're no, gonna throw it no. to Beasley. Uh, of course they are. He's like their red zone guy. Um. Anyway, uh, next game you might you might hear me curse here in a minute if this happens. Uh, next game here we got Cleveland Browns against the guy we were just talking about the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals whooped up on a man, thirty-eight to twenty-four. Um, so much for that. You know the Browns are turning their season around and maybe make a postseason run here. Uh, ain't gonna happen now. Uh, Baker Mayfield, two forty-seven, two touchdowns at a pick. Nick Chubb, one twenty-seven at a touchdown. Huge game from him. Hunt was kind of non-existent in the run game, but did catch eight for sixty-two. Uh, Odell was alive, eight for sixty-six. Not great, but you know you're you're liking that. Um, Kyler Murray uh, had, had had an overall good game. I mean, two nineteen, a touchdown and an interception was looking good. Fifty-six yards on the ground too, but this was the Kenyon Drake show, man. After three weeks of being a whole lot of nothing, one hundred and thirty-seven and four touchdowns. Yeah, remember when I said earlier in this matchup that I'm screaming and yelling about that I went against Drake and McCaffrey? Yeah, the last two games we just talked about, those were the McCaffrey and Drake lines. Yeah, a lot, lot of points. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, exactly the point, though. Like, he's had three dismal weeks in a row, um, and then Kenny Drake just blows up this week. You know, they get the, they get the Seahawks next week. I mean, are we... <laughs> Are we distrusting him as kind of a you know, like you you've just got to use this guy again or or what here? I mean, running backs are dropping like flies, dude. But I know he was on that like fringe. Or am I going to use him? Am I not going to use him? Line this week, I got a lot of questions about him, and I was kind of fifty fifty on him depending on the situation. But I mean, it, it, is he now kind of moved up into like probably starting him in most situations, or is it going to be like? kind of flex range so you're gonna to have to think about it real hard i would i would say flex range if anything the the one thing that I, th I think he's definitely got going for him is he's clearly you know the leader in that backfield so you don't have to worry about that yeah it's, nobody it's else a matter of you know he, oh, he's not going to score four touchdowns again he's probably not going to get 100 yards uh on the ground but he also is probably going to lead you know that that backfield in touches barring i mean i guess barring an injury it would seem um so, yeah, I mean, if you've been relying on him to, to get you through the playoffs, then, yeah, I think you're going to rely on him in in the title game. But if he's a guy that has been on your bench and you're, you know, in the finals, I, I, I don't see a strong reason to take him off of your bench unless you have to. Yeah, I mean, the la it was actually the last four games. Uh, so, obviously, mm -hmm. he came over and played that first game because San Fran and was just, like, amazing and nobody really expected it, right? But then he came... 10 for 35, 16 for 67, 13 for 31, 11 for 37. Yeah, three of those were San Fran, the Rams, and the Steelers, so you get it. But one was against Tampa Bay, and you're like, what, really? <laughs> but uh, 
yeah, then he does this against Cleveland. I don't know. Uh, yeah, he, he. It'll be interesting to see where I get him ranked this year, this this next week. But I'm actually more interested. And we don't have to go into it, but I'll be very interested to see like how he gets rated next season. Um, especially if they do let like David Johnson go and things like that, because obviously then that is totally his backfield in my opinion. So, um, yeah, the the next year ranking is interesting because every every mock draft I've seen so far has got them drafting uh, Judy as well. So you're gonna have two, second year Kyler Christian Kirk, possibly Judy to throw the, throw the ball too. So that Ooh. offense is gonna just take off. Well, I you I've said before I I like the Cardinals so much more than I should. And you put Judy on that that team as well, and man, that offense is going to be tough. Man. It, it's a, it's a good offense. They need offensive line help big time because Kyler Murray runs for his life a lot. You know, some of that is on Kyler Murray because he just kind of like panics. You you can tell he's not a good mm-hmm. pocket presence guy right now. But um, yeah, you add Judy and maybe an offensive lineman somewhere that 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 offense will just take off. I, I do like it. Yep. Uh, Jags Raiders here. We're down to the final three games. So let's get through these here. Jags Raiders. Uh, Jaguars win twenty to sixteen. All, all the talk about the Jaguars uh, rolling over and dying. Uh, maybe the Raiders did it first. Um, Minshew two hundred one and two touchdowns. Fournette forty two yards, no touchdowns. Really nothing in the passing game. You know, um, TJ Shark was was out, and you, you thought you were going to get big games from Didi and like Chris Conley just didn't have well Kylie got the two touchdowns so that but like the the receptions and the yards is not there Dini did nothing which was kind of like what how in the world okay anyway uh I think Minshew hates Dini for whatever reason he just does not use him um Oakland side Carr 267 in the touch Jacobs played played a lot got a lot of reps 24 touches 24 rushes for 89 yards did not find the end zone though receiving wise this was Darren Waller uh Eight for one twenty-two, and no touchdowns. Tyro Williams got the the one touchdown. Pretty long play, forty-yard pass play there. Um, the question we've got here is, you know, now that the Raiders are, I mean, you wrote their season's basically over. Have they been knocked out of the playoff race? They're they're out, right? Is that I mean, I'm not a Raiders fan, so I don't know the tiebreakers, but I know that they would have to win out and the teams ahead of them would have to lose out for them to get to a tie. So at least I don't know the tiebreakers, but yeah, yeah, their season is unofficially over if it's not officially over. Yeah, so with that being said, um, you know, Jacobs obviously has this, you know, bad shoulder of his. So do we see them, you know, if he plays next week, do we trust his usage usage to be will be enough to start him, or like they're gonna like? Do we think they they're gonna mix in a little more Washington? Um, I mean, again, he got twenty four carries this week with that bum shoulder, so I don't know. I mean, um, I think the just the fact that you know two weeks ago he did not play and they you know protected him, and then this week he played and you know like I said at twenty four carries, I, if he's if he's active, then yes, I think you trust him. I, they, that kid is as tough as they come. I don't know how every team in the NFL wouldn't, you know, want him in that backfield. And he has a pretty decent matchup against the Chargers, who are much better against the much, much better against the pass than they are against the run. So yeah, if he's out there, uh, and I don't see how you don't start him again. I mean, you'd have to have some really impressive pieces in that backfield to to not play him. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, he just gets so much. He just gets so much usage. You, you just got to plug him in there. Um, <clears throat> and they, uh, who do they get? They get the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they can be run on, but they're not. They're not great in the passing game, or they're great in the passing game. Not so much in the run game, but yeah, that, that'll be a tougher matchup for sure. Um, Minnesota Chargers. Minnesota embarrassed the Chargers, man. Thirty-nine to ten. Like, wow. Philip Rivers. I'm going to start on this side, man, because it's ugly. Phillip Rivers, 307 yards. You like that? You like the touchdown? Three picks? The running game couldn't do anything, and they didn't even get the chance, right? I mean, it's just non-existent. Both seven carries for Gordon and Eckler, under 30 yards each. Um, Reception-wise, you know, Keenan Allen, 9 for 99. That looks good. Mike Williams, 4 for 71. Got in the end zone again. Um, Two weeks in a row, baby. <laughs> I Mike know. Williams, MVP. <laughs> 
Uh, Eckler at least salvaged and and Gordon at least in PPR leagues kind of salvaged their days with five receptions. Uh, but it just it wasn't a good game on their side here. Uh, Kirk Cousins didn't have to do a whole lot. Two hundred seven touchdown interception. Uh, reception wise, you know, Thielen was back, but they just didn't really have to pass. I mean, three for 24 Diggs was four for 76. Uh, Irv Smith caught the touchdown. It was like the first drive, like nothing was a one yard catch. Um, big news here though, is Minnesota Dalvin cook re injured that shoulder or whatever it is that he re injured. Um, we know nine for 24 before he went out caught three for 16. The question here is, you know, hopefully you were able to handcuff him with Madison, but of course all, we all now know that Madison has been out the last couple of weeks. So that's not looking great. I mean, assuming, I, I don't even know. I really had to ask the question. I mean, like I'm just going to ask this. Let's let's say for instance Cook and Madison both don't play. Do you um, use Mike Boone, who today got thirteen for fifty six and two touchdowns? Man, um, they are playing. I the feel Packers. like a, I feel like a broken record, but I think I will just repeat the. It depends on who else you have. Um, I would definitely not be excited, and I don't think that. I ever would have considered, you know, playing Mike Boone in the finals for a title. But if, you know, you were relying on Dalvin, you may not necessarily have a better option. You might have to do a, you know, a, a waiver wire, um, you know, search to, to see on maybe Saturday or maybe even Sunday morning if, you know, something, something happens injury wise where you can pick up someone who's a little more reliable than Mike Boone. But, you may be in a position where you have to play him. I, I mean, at least he only really has to worry about splitting carries with Abdullah, who I can tell you as a Lions fan is is nothing to, to write home about. So, um, <laughs> well, so, so if I it's mean, Madison though, does that change your opinion a little more? Oh yeah, oh Madison's a hundred percent right? must yeah, play. There's I no agree. question about that. I, I yeah, hundred percent agree with you there. All right, uh, moving on here, Rams Cowboys. We've got the Rams 21, Cowboys 44. So Cowboys finally show up and uh, you know get get the job done. Keep it a race in the NFC uh, least. Um, Jared Goff 284, two touchdowns and a pick. Uh, Gurley only 11 for 20 and a pick or in a touchdown. Sorry. Um, Brandy Cooks and Cup and and Robert Woods kind of nothing. I mean Cup caught a touchdown thankfully. Um, <laughs> Big reception guy here, Tyler Higby, twelve for a hundred and eleven yards. Like wowzers! Like, how was he not the big reception guy with even with Everett in there? All like, he is killing it, dude. It is unbelievable. Um, I was so mad at myself for benching Mark Andrews for Higby on Thursday night when when Mark Andrews caught the touchdown. Not not anymore. Let's. <laughs> uh, the Cowboys side, you know, Dak, two twelve and two touchdowns. Tony Pollard had a great game, one hundred thirty one a touchdown. Some garbage time, I'm sure. Elliott, twenty four of one seventeen, two touchdowns. Big game from him. Caught forty three in the air as well. Amari Cooper was kind of nothing. Um, you know, Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> yeah, but Gallup didn't do anything either here, man. Like it's no, crazy. That's, that was a surprise. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was all like Tavon Austin, big. Big chunk catch, Jarwin. Like, it's just a bunch of guys, like, just caught passes. Like, it was just weird. I mean, Dallas, they had a big lead. So, you know. That's true. They were, what, it was 20, what was it, 28-7 there for, for a little while. So, yeah, I mean, they didn't have to do much. Of course, but, of uh, course they're going to run the ball. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, who, who do you feel better about next week against the Eagles? Um, Dak or Zeke? I mean, arguably the Eagles have a better run defense than they do pass defense, but does it matter? That's always tough whenever you're talking about divisional matchups, and that game is to <clears throat> some extent got the you know the NFC East on the line more oh, so absolutely for, for does. Philly. That so is that's the game. probably going to be a lower scoring game. 
So under those circumstances, I mean, even though it's it's kind of been, you know, Dak and Amari um, kind of leading the way, I would lean towards just a healthy dose of Zeke. Um, so I would I would take Zeke over Dak next week. Yeah, I mean, Dak, Dak will definitely be rated pretty high. I mean, you're you're probably starting both these guys, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I think Dak's going to have the bigger day. Um, well, Nick, I, I said Zeke, so do you agree? Oh, you agree sorry. I, for some reason, I thought you said Dak. I have no idea why. No, uh, no, no. no, sorry. I, I, I think no, Dak's I'm just gonna... going. I'm just going game script. I'm just going how I how I'm. I know it's a week away, but how I think that the game will will play out. Like I said, I think it'll be more of a low scoring, you know, season on the line kind of deal. And usually, those games are much more 2017 than you know 50 to 45. Especially when it's divisional, where these two teams know each other inside and out, there will be no surprises. Yeah, I don't know. I still think I still think Dak will still figure out a way to get done. I mean, come on, Haskins had a good game against the Eagles. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's not a knock on Dak so much. Um, like I said, it's been you know, it's it, but Zeke hasn't been Dak like crushing year. it, dude. That's that's my thing. Like Zeke really hasn't been Zeke. Like it's no. this year. So like that's why I think it's going to go back to. To be in a, it's going to be a Dak game. Like he'll figure it out. Um, you, could, right. you could be right. Last game on the docket here: Falcons 49ers. Um, amazing, Best game amazing, of the day. amazing finish. And I'm so mad I missed it because uh, I was out with the fam. <laughs> uh, Falcons win the last second. Literally the last second. 29 to 22. Um, Matt Ryan 210, two touchdowns. Devonta Freeman whatever 39 yards i don't even know why i read that one um julio jones 13 for 134 and two touchdowns one being the walk off uh the review off <laughs> yeah right i mean it didn't look like he had it and then it was just like they they, they reviewed it like it was a close call initially they didn't they didn't call it a touchdown but it ended up being one and they won it um Jimmy Garoppolo, like this was a total letdown game for the 49ers. I'm not really sure what the hell happened here. Um, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo on defense was out, man. They they had a Detroit Lions esque injury I, report on defense. I guess, but like the offense didn't really get it going. It's not like the Falcons defense is great, but like I know they're better than they were earlier in the year because they made some changes. But man, you didn't expect this. Garoppolo no, no. to it after the game they had last week against the Saints, where they just like put up like 300 points. Um, <laughs> it's like video game last week, and this game is like what the hell. Um, anyway, Jimmy G, two hundred yards and a touch. Mostert led the led the way in the backfield, fourteen carries to, for fifty four yards and a touchdown. Next closest guy, you know, Coleman and Breida with four reach. So Mostert's the guy at this point. Uh, Kittle was the only receiver that you cared about. Um, Thirteen for one thirty four, so he balled out. But yeah, I mean the. The question is, you know, this this 49ers run heavy offense, right? I mean, it's this is Mostert big time now, right? I mean, this is his backfield with everybody healthy. Um, title on the line. Do you trust him against the Rams next week? And, you know, Rams got a solid run defense, right? Uh, well, they didn't today. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yes. they had 200, 200 yard running backs, but. Yeah, um, but I mean, the Rams, the Rams are pretty do you, solid. Do you. Do you trust Mostert against the Rams if you have to? I I guess if you're playing him, he probably is your best option. He he's definitely a, a risk reward guy because you know he, he's got the upside of you know being the lead back right now in that offense who wants to run the ball so he easily could get you know twenty carries, a hundred yards, and a touchdown, and he also could you know, end up with 10 carries for 30 yards and not get in the end zone. So yeah, I don't you, think you fully trust him, but I don't think he's going to be a bad play. No, I, I think the only thing you worry about, and everybody did this week, even too, they're like, well, is it really his? Is it really his? Because, you know, Shanahan will just change his mind mid-game. <laughs> That's yeah, what he does. I, mean, I, think today, I think today proves that they had, <laughs> you know, Mostert, Coleman, Brita, all healthy. Yeah, uh, Mostert I had agree. 14 carries. You know, the, the other two had eight total. So yeah, um, I agree. Totally agree touchdown. with you. So, yeah. <clears throat> totally agree with you, man. All right. Well, I'm uh, I'm gonna sit here and uh, hopefully not cry. Yeah, sweat this I, out. I, I, dude, I'm, I'm dying here. Like, I'm up by three point seven points. 
I'm now projected to win, according to ESPN. Until um, Beasley catches the touchdown. I know. Until Beasley catches, like, one pass for five yards, I'm out. Like, it's done. Um, like, it, the projection will flip the other way. Like, this is what will happen. Boswell will look like a 50-yard field goal and screw me at the very last second to win the game. Like, it's just going to happen. I know I'm going to cry. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go um, lose all my nails and sweat. I'm going to get a lot of Gatorade. Uh and uh and go watch the end of this game. So yeah. I uh, hope everybody made it to week sixteen in the finals. And uh yep, see y'all next week. <laughs>